Hello, it's Nina from uh, Stitching with a Smile. Welcome back to our second to last Hardanger Stitch Along on this piece. You're almost done! <laughs> so last week we did the needle weaving and the dove's eyes, if that's what you chose to do in these four motifs. And this week we're going to do all the stitching all the way around. Now this will take a little bit of time, but that's okay. And to start, I'm going to give you the path that we'll be taking. Now this was somewhat difficult to figure out. Um, because of this area, it's not where you just go up and down, up and down, up and down, and then when you come back you go up and down, up and down. So this area you've got to do something a little bit different. I figured out a path that I'm using. There's probably a better way to do it. I just haven't figured it out. Uh, if you figure it out, great. <laughs> okay, we'll start. I've highlighted in yellow the first path around that you will be taking. We're going to surround the entire section first and then we'll do the interior section after. In the interior, when we do the interior section, that's when we'll do the dove size. Right now we're just going to needle weave around the exterior. So I've chosen a start spot. I ignore this for now. I've chosen this as a start spot. Now the reason I've chosen this is we will go up and around the entire area, come back this way, and come up. So we'll be stitching this way, this way, this way. And if you've still got lots of thread left, rather than tie it off, you jump over and start here for the next section so that we don't have to tie on and tie off. And that's why I've chosen to start here and move in this direction. Now again, if you're left-handed, I think upside down. Yes, upside down would work because you would go this way and pull with your left hand. So anything I say, turn it upside down. Okay, back to the right-handed. Now you could pick this one or this one to start or this one to start as long as it's moving in this way so that when you come back around you can skip over and continue. I've just randomly chosen this bar here rather than that bar there. And if we count it's one uh, let's see, what's the best way? Maybe to count the cluster blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and it's right above the eighth one. But as I said, as long as you're on one of these horizontal ones, it'll work. Okay, so this is fairly straightforward. It's stitched the same way. I won't redo and reteach the needle weaving or the dove's eyes. That was done the last lesson. This lesson will be the path that we need to take for this section. So you will stitch this way, follow the arrows, follow the arrows, and here. Now, what happens here, you can't continue. So when you finish this bar, bring your needle to the back of your work, run it through the back of this closter block behind your work, come out here and start again, going this way. So you come up here, bring your thread in the back, run it through the back of this closter block, come out and start needle weaving again. Do this section and again the same thing. Bring your needle to the back, run it through the closter block, come out and stitch the next section. So we'll keep going. So this entire portion will be done this way and you'll see the yellow like that there. Let me bring it up a bit more. There and there. This is where we have to do something different and I've called it double back but um, 
I don't know what the, I don't even think there is a technical term. I'll show you what I mean. So you'll come merrily along, again, back of your work, behind the cloister block, come back out and stitch this. You'll come back in here. Don't go behind this cloister block. What you're going to do is actually take your thread and go back down this cloister block behind your work and start stitching there. And what happens is when you do it that way, you end up doing that progression, which makes a lot of sense. So each section is exactly the same. Behind your work, come around, come around, come around, but there behind your work, do this come up here and then double back behind. And I'll show you what I mean. I'll actually stitch it for you. So let me do that. Okay, I'm about halfway on this block. So what I've done is I've stitched this, this, and I'll finish this one. And what I want to do is start here so that I can come down. So let me finish this block and I'll show you what I mean by double, doubling back on it. Like I said, I don't think there is a term for this. This is not something you normally do, but it's the only way I could figure out the progression without starting and stopping too many threads. There we go. Oh, maybe I'll do one more. Um, no, let's just leave it at that. Okay. I'm going to, this is the front of my work. What I want to do is bring the thread behind that stitch so that I can start and do this one. So I'm going to take my thread, my needle, and bring it to the back of my work. I'm going to mark it with my finger so I know which one it is. Okay, I need to turn. And what I want to do is get to that cloister block to stitch, but I'm up here. So I'm going to take my needle and let me do this up close. I'll be right back into the camera. I've stuck my thread in the back thread of one of these just to hold it so that it doesn't show through an opening. There we are. Don't pull too tight when you're doing this type of thing. Now I'm going to bring my needle back to the front of my work. And needle weave this bar. I'll get it started with you. Don't pull too tight here because you've, you've got... Uh, again, also, same thing here. Well, let me do this part and I'll tell you in a moment. Okay. And you carry on. Now you can start pulling tight. So what we've done is we stitched from here up to there. We needle wove up to there. We dropped our needle into the back of our work, brought the thread behind that needle weaving, secured it in one of the threads, brought our thread back to the front of our work, and continue needle weaving. So what we can do now is, again, follow in a stair step fashion down here. Now as you can see I've already started. This is the end of it. I had to see if it would work and it does work. So as I come down here if I have still lots of thread left I can jump over here and then I'm doing the second part which I'll show you in a moment. As you go behind when you needle weave up here and take your thread in the back and go behind that cloister block and come out here and start needle weaving again, don't pull too tight because otherwise you're going to bunch bunch it up like that and you don't want to do that. So be careful as you go behind your cloister blocks or behind that bar when you do the double back not to pull too tight. So that's the first section and I'll be back with the second section. 
So once you've done the exterior stitching, the way I just finished showing you, you'll do the interior part all the way around. And I've highlighted in pink a portion of it, but just consider that uh, each time you turn this, you'll get the complete uh, picture. Ignore this. I made a mistake, highlighted the wrong one, so I just whited that out. And the path will move if you're right-handed in this direction, and if you're left-handed, it'll move in the other direction. This part up here, I'll show you. I've overlaid some vellum in order to do the count. I've numbered the sequence and I will make a, a copy and also insert it as well in a moment. Um, again, this is the sequence for the right-handed people and if you are left-handed, turn that around. Follow the numbers in sequence, one, two, three, except around the other way. So let me walk you through this. And I'm hoping you can see it well enough, because I wanted to get the whole thing in here. When you follow up here, this will be repetitive and you'll be doing a turnaround, a funny kind of turnaround here in order to get back to following this up in sequence again. So let's count off. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's fairly easy. You needle weave up, over, up, over in a zigzag fashion. You can start uh, anywhere along here. Most likely as you came up from the bottom and finished off, uh, got to the end of doing the exterior, you can just jump over and start the interior. So let me make sure I'm in f frame again. Okay. So again, zigzag up here. So we have five, six, and then we're going to do seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And just like we did on the previous section, you'll take your thread to the back of your work, string it through this cloister block, and then bring it back to the front of the work through here, and do number 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Again, drop your needle into the back of the work, thread it through the cloister block, bring it up, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 5, and 6. Same thing again, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, once again at the back of your work behind the cloister block, 34, 35, 36. If you're lucky enough and your thread is short, bring it through the back of your work and anchor it in the cloister blocks. If you still have a lot of thread, then you're going to have to do a bit of a backward thing because what you want to do is you're going to be stitching from here to here. You're going to end up right here and you actually want to start here to get back into that zigzag fashion. Because 37, 38, 39, 40, 41 gets you back into that zigzag to start this all over again. Let me show you how I'm going to do this. I'm going to take my thread into the back of my work, anchor it behind one of these teeny tiny stitches, 
bring it behind this unworked cloister block and start at this end and move this way. Let me show you. So I've woven this cloister block. My thread is up here and what I want to do is weave this cloister block starting at the bottom, go up, over, down and over, down and over. This is how I'm going to do it. I'm up here and like I said if you're lucky enough that you have a short piece of thread worked out to here perfectly go ahead and tie it off and tie on a new one to do to start this all the way down. I don't so this is what I'm going to do. Bring my thread to the back I will anchor my thread behind, can you see, behind a little tiny stitch just so that it doesn't go uh, sneaking out and be seen from the front. Then I will, I'm going to have to turn my work I will bring my needle up and even though this is not a waist knot, this is the thread coming from behind here, I'm still going to anchor it behind these because I'm going to work from here in this direction. So I will anchor it just like I would if it were a waist knot. And if you did have a waist knot, you would put it in here and then anchor it the way I'm anchoring this one. And start stitching. Etc. So let me show you that again. So you'll be coming up here. You'll go up, around, then behind, up, and around and behind. There we are. Let me get to this point. So I'll do all that uh, repetitively and you're going to come up this way. You'll take that thread to the back of your work, anchor it behind one of these little tiny stitches so that it doesn't sneak out of one of these open spots bring it behind here and anchor it as you stitch this one. Then you will stitch and you'll end up coming up exactly the same as we did before for each of the four sections. Left-handed, you will start here the exact same way, but you will go this way and around, anchor your thread and when you come up to here, you will anchor underneath and then start stitching again and it'll repeat itself all over again. I'll post these pictures right here. Now what I've shown you is without the dove eyes. As you're stitching this, when you come to a point where there is a dove's eye, and if you look at the pattern, there are dove's eyes, or you look at the picture, I should say, not the pattern, there's a dove's eye in each one of these center ones, and then in each of the center here. So as you stitch, you'll come up and around. When you get to this one, you now have three sides plus half of this covering where the dove's eye will be. Put your dove's eye in there. And actually, come to think of it, you will come up here. These two will already be done. 
you will come up here to here, put your dove's eye, half of this stitch, put your dove's eye, finish that one, come here, here, half of this dove's eye, back here, thread behind, you come up, and as you get to this one, there's a dove side. This was done previously, so you'll do half of this, add in your dove's eye, come up around half of this one, add in your dove's eye, finish that one and around. Continue that the whole way. And as you're coming up here, these two are already done, the two needle weaving bars. When you get to this one, this is going to be the fourth, so it'll be just half. Put your dove's eye in. I really hope that explains how to put your dove's eyes in there. But if you have any questions, let me know, and uh, we can go over it again. Thanks so much. Um, really appreciate all the feedback I'm getting and uh, the comments. Thank you. And your, subscri your subscriptions. Really appreciate it. Have a good day. Bye-bye.